thank you uh, for attending this, uh, this live talk uh, here at Film at Lincoln Center. Uh, my name is Dan Sullivan. I'm a member of the programming team at Film at Lincoln Center. Uh, just want to welcome you all to, uh, to this talk, uh, which will be about a, a film that, we, uh, that we're running at the moment, uh, uh, Martin Eden, uh, directed by Pietro Marcello. Um, I want to thank the film's distributor, uh, Kino Lorber, um, for working with us on every aspect of, uh, of, this, film's, uh, of this film's run. And also, uh, I should note that for this first week of the film's uh, release, we're also, uh, we're all, we'll also be showing a number of uh, the director, uh, Pietro Marcello's uh, previous uh, films, in our, also in our virtual cinema, his, uh, his films uh, Crossing the Line, uh, The Silence of Pella Chien, um, Lost and Beautiful, and The Mouth of the Wolf are also all available for rental in our virtual cinema. So, uh, so yeah, watch, uh, if you haven't already, uh, please uh, check out Martin Eden and then check out the, the, uh, the earlier work. I, I, I seriously doubt you'll be disappointed. Um, but for today, um, I'm really, really uh, pleased to say that we're joined by the director, uh, the great Pietro Marcello, as well as the uh, star of Martin Eden, uh, Luca Marinelli. Um, and we'll also, we're also joined by uh, Lily Bluen, who will be interpreting for us uh, as needed. But, uh, but first, uh, uh, boys, I guess, uh, say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good evening, no. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 11, I guess it's 11, 11 p.m. For, for you guys. So, um, yeah. So the audience should bear that in mind. Don't, don't, don't ask excessively involved questions. Everyone's tired. <laughs> <laughs> Our try. English is so bad that we need interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thankfully the interpreter is not me. Uh, yeah, but in any event, um, why don't we just begin? Um, uh, I'll begin with a question uh, for Pietro um, about uh, Martin Eden. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's a pretty natural question that I think you've gotten a lot, but I think it kind of is helpful for setting up a discussion of the film. Um, uh, it's adapted freely um, from a novel by the, by the writer uh, Jack London. Um, so maybe just to begin, uh, could you talk a bit about uh, your relationship with, with this book, uh, with Jack London in general, perhaps? Um, and I know that uh, there is a very, uh, there's a very practical element to all of this because I think the book was introduced to you by your, your co-screenwriter, right? Yeah, uh, sì, ho capito tutto. Okay. Eh, e niente, questo libro mi è stato regalato quando avevo vent'anni che me lo regalò il mio sceneggiatore Maurizio Braucci. Io l'ho letto a vent'anni e restai colpito da Martin Eden innanzitutto per la questione di essere autodidatti, cioè di chi si fa da solo e non attraverso le scuole, le accademie. E, e chiaramente è rimasto un libro importante per me, ma innanzitutto riguardo alla visione dell'autodidatta. È così che dopo vent'anni siamo riusciti a realizzarlo e a produrlo. Yes, this book was given to me as a gift uh, 20 years ago by my co-screenwriter Maurizio Braucci and I was uh, all very impressed by it from the get-go because uh, the protagonist is uh, an autodidact, is a self-made man, um, there's, he doesn't go to school, there's no academic background there and uh, it's was a very important book to me from the start, especially for this component of him being a self-made man. And 20 years later, we were able to uh, produce it and uh, make it, make, get it made. Riguardo a Jack London, uh, amo i libri di Jack London. È, un, è stato un grande, un grande scrittore. I libri che amo di più di lui sono Il Talone di Ferro e Martin Eden, e anche i libri di avventure, Lupo di Mare e tanti altri. Un grande scrittore. In, in Europa è uno scrittore conosciuto in particolar modo Martin Eden e il tallone di ferro che sono credo che, che i libri più particolari che ha realizzato Jack London Jack London uh, is a writer I love very much I love his books in particular The Iron Heel and Martin Eden um, and also the adventure ones like uh, The Sea Wolf uh, and Martin Eden and uh, The Iron Hill are the most well-known ones in, in Europe, 
that's for sure because they're mo the most uh, um, sp particular ones. Um, well, so then maybe, um, maybe just kind of uh, building on that, I wanted to ask about um, the actual, the process of, of adapting um, the novel, uh, your collaboration uh, with, with Mauricio uh, uh, Brauchi. Um, so uh, how, did, how did the two of you uh, sort of conceptualize some of these transformations that you've made to the text? Um, there are a number of transpositions, period, uh, location, uh, some of the political details and so on. Um, so, so how did the two of you uh, go about sort of uh, relocating the text, I guess? Ma diciamo che Martin Eden io l'ho realizzato come se fosse un documentario, nello stesso modo come ho realizzato gli altri film. A differenza degli altri film, avevo un budget maggiore. Ma credo che innanzitutto noi abbiamo fatto una liberissima trasposizione perché non eravamo in grado di raccontare l'America, Auckland, il mondo americano di Martin Eden. E diciamo noi l'abbiamo utilizzato come un archetipo, come se fosse un Faust, un Amleto, e l'abbiamo riportato nella, in una location che era Napoli. Anche perché Napoli era il territorio a noi più adatto per realizzare Martin Eden. E poi, innanzitutto, perché non abbiamo la letteratura del mare, non abbiamo la letteratura italiana, non, non è ricca di questo. Abbiamo, non abbiamo Stevenson, non abbiamo Conrad, non abbiamo i grandi scrittori della letteratura che raccontano il mare. Diciamo, l'Italia è un paese un po' particolare. Di mare sì, ma anche di campagna. Il nostro Martin Eden è un po' marinaio, ma anche paesano contadino, un po' come nella nostra letteratura. I made Martin Eden um, like a documentary, just like the way I'd made all my other films. In this case, I had a bigger budget, but the method was the same. Um, it was a very free transposition because, you know, I couldn't set it in America. I couldn't talk about Auckland. Um, to me, he was an archetype just like Faust or Hamlet. And the easiest or most straightforward way for me uh, to transpose it was Naples. Naples was the most suitable uh, setting for the story. Also, we don't have in our culture the mm, seafaring literature Liter literary tradition that you have in um, America or in the Anglo-Saxon world. We, you, we don't have uh, Stevenson, we don't have Conrad um, as, as great nautical writers. Um, Italy is a very um, particular country in which we do have the sea, but we're also very connected to uh, our um, peasant traditions and our literature tends to be like that. And, um, and Luca, I I, first of all, I should have noted earlier uh, that, I mean, this feels like a lifetime ago, but Luca did win the Best Actor uh, Prize at the Venice uh, Film Festival for this, for this uh, performance. Um, so, uh, so uh, yes, I, I think a lot of people are very interested in, uh, in your performance here. And I'm, and I'm wondering, um, just to begin, could you, I mean, first of all, um, did you also, did you know uh, the novel or, um, uh, was there any relationship with uh, the text there? But I'm also just curious, you know, with all the changes um, to, to the text, like the, you know, the setting period and so on that we were just saying, there's all, there are also a lot of changes to the, to the character and like his, his kind of trajectory. Um, so how, how did you and Pietro sort of uh, work to find this new characterization? Um... Ma um, diciamo, um, io conoscevo, naturalmente conoscevo Jack London, lo conoscevo, ma uh, conoscevo penso i libri che um, tutti più o meno conoscono, uh, White Fang o Il richiamo della foresta, The Call of the Will, um, quello era il Jack London che conoscevo per un bel po'. Um, poi l'incontro con Pietro mi ha portato a conoscere questo testo, Martin Eden, che del quale avevo già sentito parlare eh, perché c'era un po' questa, questa storia che avevo sentito che lui aveva scritto questo libro durante la navigazione durante uno di questi suoi viaggi che faceva meravigliosi e, e quindi non so, mi sentivo attratto in, in qualche maniera da questo libro però 
non l'avevo mai incontrato, quindi ringrazio Pietro personalmente in questo momento di nuovo per avermi fatto eh, per tante cose, ma anche per questo lo ringrazio. E, e quindi ho incontrato Martin Eden assieme al, alla sceneggiatura di Pietro eh, ed ora in questo momento non ricordo veramente più eh, cosa ho letto nella sceneggiatura e cosa ho letto nel libro. Uh, perché diciamo questi due mondi si sovrappongono ormai nella, nella mia mente um, per, per rispondere invece alla domanda del cambio ma lì è stato un lavoro bellissimo perché io credo fortemente nel cinema come un lavoro di, di, di collaborazione di cooperazione e con Pietro è stato molto bello questo lavoro perché Uh, dimmi tu quando lì mi devo fermare e parlo bene. troppo come mi vuoi, fermo. va bene facciamo dopo la parte della collaborazione first part okay. uh, <laughs> I was familiar with um, Jack London but um, with his books like uh, White Fang or The Call of the Wild and that was the Jack London I, I knew uh, I got to know Martin Eden through Pietro and he got me to um, read this uh, book. I'd heard about it and uh, I was intrigued by it because I knew that he had written it during um, his time at sea in one of his wonderful uh, trips out uh, at sea. And I was very attracted by it, but I never actually met it. And thanks to Pietro, um, I was able to um, get to know it deeply. And I want to thank Pietro personally, once again, for uh, this gift that he gave me. And uh, now I met Martin Eden both through the book and through the script that Pietro gave me pretty much at the same time. And at this point, I have a hard time recalling what was in the book and what was in the script. These two worlds uh, overlap in my mind. Um, now, regarding how we worked with it and the transposition, it was a very beautiful beautiful kind of work uh, because I believe in cinema as a collaboration, as a way of working together. And with Pietro, that was uh, uh, the way to work. Second part. Um, no, scherzo. No, no, ma il, la, la seconda parte mh, è stato tutto il... Um, questo lavoro assieme che abbiamo fatto, io ho sentito una grande fiducia da parte di Pietro, io avevo grande fiducia in lui e e ci siamo semplicemente eh, divertiti assieme, noi con tutti gli altri reparti, a creare questo, questo personaggio. C'è stata l'intuizione bellissima di Pietro di dividere il film in due parti, questo ci ha aiutato moltissimo eh, e ha aiutato tantissimo me a creare questo, questa forte separazione tra il primo Martin Eden e il secondo Martin Eden. È stato per me fondamentale questo periodo di pausa che mi ha permesso di, di allontanarmi e, e di lasciare il primo Martin Eden e di entrare nel, nel secondo Martin Eden. So the way we worked was based on uh, mutual trust. Uh, I totally trusted him and I felt he trusted me. And we had a lot of fun working together, the two of us and the other uh, departments in creating this character. Um, Pietro had the brilliant intuition of dividing the film in two parts. And this really helped me um, at a deep level to create this uh, marked separation. We had a time off in between and that really allowed me uh, to create a uh, marked cut between the first Martin Eden and then re-enter into the second Martin Eden. Yeah. Um, so for everyone who's watching, uh, just a reminder, uh, you, can, uh, you can ask us questions uh, uh, with the uh, Q&A function uh, at, the begin at the bottom of the screen and uh, we will uh, get to as many of them as we can in the second half of this talk. But for now, uh, I'm going to keep uh, interrogating these two, these two guys. Um, uh, so uh, we'll go back to, uh, to Pietro for a moment, because you, you, you evoked your, uh, your background in documentary. And I think um, when people um, who aren't familiar with the other films uh, watch them in the retrospective, you'll notice um, you know, uh, a lot of them are, are uh, unmistakably sort of works of nonfiction. Um, uh, so I'm wondering, uh, considering that this is like a, you know, a kind of a, a, a kind of a period film, um, how, 
your documentary, how your experience uh, with the documentary and so on, how that informed, <clears throat> excuse me, how that informed your approach um, to, to rendering a uh, uh, period. Um, but I'm also, uh, I think this might enter into it somehow. You're, you are also the cinematographer of all of your films, I believe. Uh, you shot this on Super 16 millimeters. So, um, so I'm just, I'm curious about the, uh, how all these things are, are related because I, uh, I think they are, but um, perhaps you could, you could elaborate on that. Va bene, io ho iniziato con i documentari perché i documentari erano, era l'unico modo per me per fare film, perché era lo strumento più accessibile per fare film. Non ho scelto di fare documentari perché volevo fare documentari, perché avevo una telecamera e quello è stato l'unico mezzo per iniziare. E così mi sono creato un metodo tutto mio di fare film, nel senso non credo tanto nei modelli, credo nei metodi. E guardando i film del passato ho imparato a fare qualcosa, ho imparato a a fare la macchina, la cinepresa, a caricare i magazzini, a fare il montaggio, a fare tutto, tutto da solo. E in un certo senso il documentario mi ha aiutato a, ad affrontare anche l'imprevisto del cinema. Come spesso ho fatto, ho prodotto anche i miei film e, e così, ho, per, non tanto per volontà, per necessità, ho imparato un po' a fare tutto. E, e lo strumento del documentario per me è uno strumento del cinema, dipende dall'uso che ne fai. E credo che il documentario sia la base di tutto. È il documentario che ti forma e ti fa le ossa. Vado piano piano perché così... Um, I started with documentaries because it was the only way for me to make movies. It was the uh, most accessible one. Um, it's not that I wanted to make a documentary, it's just that I had a camera and I wanted to make films. And so I created my own method to do that. I don't believe in models, I believe in methods. So I started, you, you know, running the, the camera myself and, you know, loading magazines and editing it. What documentary teaches you is how to deal with the unexpected. So for me, it was out of necessity that I learned how to make documentaries. To me, a documentary is a tool. It's the tool that one uses to make films. And then it's what um, trains you. It's what allows you to hone your skills. And Martin Eden, probably the film where I had the budget più grande dei miei film, nel senso perché poi. La fortuna è stata anche che l'abbiamo potuto produrre, l'abbiamo fatto come volevamo, perché diciamo era abbastanza ambiziosa come idea. Però credo che è stato fondamentale avere alla, alla base il documentario, anche nel come affrontare il set, è stato importantissimo per me, specialmente per gli imprevisti del set. Martin Eden was the film with the highest budget that I'd ever made, and it was very important that we produced it ourselves because that allowed us to uh, make it the way we wanted because it was a very ambitious idea. And the documentary um, experience was at the uh, foundation of it because it taught me how to deal with my set and how to tackle the unexpected that inevitably shows up. Posso continuare all'infinito? I can go on um, until um, the end of days. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but uh, I, I should note that we're getting a t all of a sudden we're getting a ton of uh, audience questions. So I, I uh, want to get to some of those. Um, uh, but uh, bef but um, before I do, I just wanted to ask, uh, perhaps I'll ask one more question of Luca and then we'll... Um, We'll see what, uh, the, what the audience uh, wants to know. Um, uh, I guess, Luca, I'm, I'm, curious, um, I'm curious to hear about your, uh, your sort of conception of, uh, of Martin Eden's, um, his psychology, um, sort of how, how his character develops uh, across the film, because I think um, there aren't, I, I, get, I think there aren't that many films that are kind of like this, um, this buildings Roman um, uh, sort of like chronicle of someone's development that's so, um, so influenced by politics, uh, political, like political trends that were uh, going on in, uh, during the period, um, which uh, will be new to a lot of people watching the film now, I think. Um, uh, could you talk a bit about, about this kind of, about trying to find a psychology that 
has like politics entering into it so much? Um, ma guarda per me è stato questo che, che tu mi chiedi nel senso io penso di essere di, di affrontare tutto in una maniera abbastanza emozionale e, e un po' romantica diciamo quindi certo c'è stata una mia voglia di, di approfondire assolutamente tutte le tematiche che, che, alle quali Martin Eden Uh, dava la sua attenzione uh, cosa lui voleva leggere, cosa seguiva uh, dal punto di vista politico però quello che, che, che per me era importante, perché penso che dietro ogni scelta, dietro qualsiasi scelta c'è sempre un po' un, un, un sentimento un'emozione e allora mi interessava per ogni per ogni scelta di quel tipo capire che cosa l'ha veramente portato a a prendere sì, quella, quella, quella scelta, quella decisione, quella via. I think that I um, tackle everything in a very emotional and romantic way. So I felt a need to study in depth all the issues that he was involved with, all the issues that Martin Eden devoted attention to, what he uh, followed in terms of politics and what he was reading. But I believe that behind each choice, there's always an emotional um, motivation. There's always a way of feeling. And um, you know, behind each choice, I wanted to deeply understand what led him to choose that way, that approach. Però sicuramente la cosa, e qui perdonami, I will be very quickly, um, quello che, 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 mi ha, che mi ha fatto innamorare di lui sin dall'inizio era questo suo, questa maniera, questo sguardo intellettuale che lui aveva, di intelleggere la vita, che, che è sempre stato quello, da, da, da quando noi lo, 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 apriamo la prima pagina del romanzo fino alla fine, uh, questa sua maniera di guardare il mondo, Uh, con questa curiosità, con questa generosità, con questa voglia di scoprire e di sapere, uh, ma mh, su qualsiasi argomento, mh, dal punto di vista di, 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 di società, di politica, uh, questo è quello che mi ha fatto veramente innamorare di questo personaggio, di, mh, questo fatto di mettersi sempre uh, come un vero intellettuale fa, mh, sullo stesso livello delle persone che, 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 che sta osservando, di non mettersi mai da sopra. What uh, made me fall in love with him is that he always had this truly intellectual uh, way of looking at life, a way of almost in, applying his intellect to life. And that's what comes across right away from the very first page until the very end is his way of looking at the world with a deep desire to discover things, to learn things, to get to know about things at every uh, level, on every topic um, in terms of politics and society. And he always mm, positioned himself at the same level as the people he was observing, the way a true intellectual does. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to start reading some of the uh, the audience questions. Um, I'm going to try to combine some of these because we've gotten so many. Uh, I want everyone to feel like they're getting their their money's worth. Um, uh, so this is a question actually that I think both of you um, uh, could answer. Uh, it's about Naples, um, uh, the relocation of the of the of the of the narrative um, from Oakland to, to Naples. Uh, and the experience of shooting there. But um, a number of people are also asking about, uh, about Luca learning the Napolitano uh, dialect and uh, the work that goes into that. Um, maybe these are aspiring actors, I don't know. But in any event, um, uh, yeah, can we talk, uh, uh, can we talk about uh, Naples and the Napolitano dialect? Vado io. Tu. No, quello è stato un lavoro bellissimo. Eh, io ho avuto la, la, la meravigliosa possibilità di, di, di scendere proprio con Pietro con questo viaggio in macchina 
verso Napoli, da Roma a Napoli e da lì eh, sono stato un mese e mezzo prima di cominciare le riprese. Eh, però anche prima è cominciato questo lavoro. Eh, ho sentito, abbiamo sentito che era molto importante anche l'uso del dialetto nel film. Eh, e per me è stato bellissimo avvicinarmi a, a questo dialetto perché penso che ogni dialetto dia eh, un, un nuovo ritmo e un nuovo colore all'essere umano, al personaggio. E, e quindi per me è stato fondamentale impararlo. Avevo un, una persona che, che mi aiutava in questo cammino, eh, mi ha aiutato questa persona, mi ha aiutato Napoli con, con il suo spirito accogliente. E, It was a beautiful kind of work. I had the wonderful opportunity to actually drive down uh, from Rome to Naples uh, together with Pietro. And I spent one and a half months uh, there before we started shooting, but I had started my work on the language even before that. Um, we felt that the use of dialect was very important in this film. And to me, it was a beautiful experience to um, get closer to this dialect, which has a beautiful rhythm and, and color, and any dialect does that to a human being. And uh, it was great for me to have um, a person like Pietro who guided me through this, and also Naples itself, which is a very welcoming city. Pietro, do you want to add anything? Okay. Yeah. In Napoli, in Napoli, abbiamo scelto Napoli perché era il luogo più adatto per realizzare Martinilli. Innanzitutto perché io un po' ci sono cresciuto, avevo tutti i miei amici e sono tornato lì perché sapevo che c'era della gente che poteva aiutarmi per mettere sul film. E innanzitutto avevamo bisogno di una città accogliente, una città che accoglie e una città dove siamo riusciti a mettere su un bel gruppo per lavorare. E innanzitutto Napoli è una città molto... Una città di mare, come tutte le città di mare, sono città accoglienti, una città, diciamo, anarchica, per modo di dire. Ma per me è stato bellissimo ritornare al Carmine, ritornare al mercato per girare il film, ritornare in quei luoghi che sono stati i luoghi della mia gioventù, quando ero ragazzo. Ed è stato giusto farlo a Napoli perché era la città più, più adatta per realizzare Martinile. Well, Naples. Naples was the most suitable place for me to make Martin Eden. Um, I grew up there in part and I had friends there, so I knew that there were people who would be able to help me to put the film together. We needed a city that would be welcoming and I was able to put together a really beautiful group there. Naples is a um, port city and just like any city on the sea, it's extremely welcoming. I loved going back to uh, Carmen, I like going back to the market to shoot. Those were the places where my youth took place and uh, it was beautiful uh, for me to shoot in Naples. It was the most suitable place to do that. Um, I, so we have a question, um, it's about uh, uh, I guess history, uh, broadly speaking. Um, but um, but actually, I actually like this uh, this question because um, we 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 mentioned earlier the film um, uh, is kind of set in this um, in this unspecified period, which is kind of a composite of of a number of different um, historical uh, periods. Um, but uh, someone is asking how. Uh, I guess this is more for Pietro. Um, how do you see the uh, the story, the story of Martin Eden and the, and the protagonist's kind of journey? Um, how would that be different if the uh, if the film was set uh, today? And first, can I just say why I like this question? Because um, when the film premiered and and when you were last in New York and so on, Pietro, the political context in the United States and in Europe was so different. And I've never, I'm trying to think of a comparable situation where um, there's been such a transformation of the political uh, landscape and the time between a film premiering and it being released. The world's a very different place now. And I'm wondering what, if you have any reflections on this. 
Allora, io premetto che per me è difficile avere un giudizio di quel che faccio, perché di tendenza sono molto... Sto sempre lì a rifare, a riparare, a ricostruire le cose che faccio. Perciò è un po' difficile quello che, che sicuramente posso dire che l'obiettivo mio e di Maurizio Braucci, che mi è stato a fianco e che è diciamo, il primo scrittore del film, era di attraversare il Novecento. Per quanto il libro di, Marti, di, di Jack London sia un libro molto attuale, credo che sia un libro intramontabile riguardo anche alla figura del, di Martin Eden come individualista perché quello di London, diciamo, è un libro che fu molto criticato allora, però era un vero e proprio atto d'accusa nei confronti dell'individualismo. Il film è un po' storto come il libro, perciò è anche interessante vedere che a volte è criticato sotto questo aspetto qui. Però, diciamo, anche il desiderio di non avere un tempo ben preciso è stata una cosa ben, ben, ben decisa fin dalla sceneggiatura, che volevamo fare un film libero, un film imperfetto, nella sua essenza di essere film e, e siamo andati avanti in questo modo e in un certo senso anche il rapporto con Luca, con Maurizio l'abbiamo fatto un po' in stato di grazia perciò forse ubriachi di inconsapevolezza anche. To start off, I have to say that for me, it's very difficult to uh, pass judgment on my work and what I do. I'm someone who always uh, does things over and repairs what he did and rebuilds. So I can't really be objective about what I've done. Let's say that the uh, goal that I had and together with Maurizio Braucci, who was uh, the first writer of the film, was to span across the 20th century. Uh, even though the book, it is extremely current in uh, what it talks about and in a way what um, it focuses on, it's something that will never be uh, dated. Um, in, in terms of what he says about individualism, it was uh, heavily criticized when it came out uh, And indeed, it is a very uh, sharp accusation of individualism or indictment of individualism. And uh, The film, just like the book, was created in a crooked way. And our desire was always not to be specific in terms of uh, the time it was set in because we wanted for the film to be very free and imperfect uh, to some extent. Now, the relationship that we developed with Luca and with Maurizio was a true state of grace. And in a way, we were drunk on our awareness. Um, the, another question uh, for, for Luca here, um, um, I guess, what was uh, this audience member is asking what for you uh, was, the mo was the most moving moment uh, in Martin, Eden, Martin Eden's um, story or his, his, um, his journey? Um, I guess uh, if I can make, maybe make the question uh, just a a little, a little funkier. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say, uh, maybe what was the most moving moment for you as the perform, as the performer, but also, but perhaps also when you watch the film and maybe there's a difference. Um, <clears throat> but ci sono stati tantissimi momenti molto emozionanti. So che può sembrare banale dirlo, però per me è stato un film molto emozionante. Uh, sicuramente quello che ricordo con più emozione, lo dico sempre, ed è quello che mi viene sempre in mente, sono tutte le, le scene che abbiamo girato eh, in questo villaggio ricostruito. Eh, rivedere questo posto che noi abbiamo visto durante i sopralluoghi, che io ho potuto vedere seguendo Pietro e, e il resto del, del, della crew, eh, durante i sopralluoghi, vederlo abbandonato e poi vederlo ripopolato da noi e, e come con una bacchetta magica ridargli vita, quello è stato un momento molto emozionante. Tutte le scene che abbiamo girato lì mi sono piaciute tantissimo, è stato molto bello ehm, essere lì. Ehm, e sicuramente un, una scena che mi ha colpito molto è un'altra scena che abbiamo raccontato molto spesso, almeno io e Pietro, che ci vede 
abbastanza protagonisti ehm, perché era una scena dove sostanzialmente dovevamo andare via perché stava arrivando una tormenta e stava arrivando veramente una bufera e eh, anche per ragioni di sicurezza bisognava andare via e invece ci siamo ritrovati io, io e Pietro eh, con il nostro fonico eravamo in tre nel fango a girare questa scena ed è stato molto emozionante perché è stato un momento di grande comunicazione tra me e Pietro dove, dove ci siamo detti diamoci questi dieci minuti per, per portare a casa questa scena e, e così è stato e ogni volta che lo vedo è stato molto emozionante e finisco brevissimo dicendo che le cose più emozionanti da spettatore è stato vedere tutto il lavoro meraviglioso di montaggio che è stato fatto sul film e le inserzioni di, questi, di queste immagini di repertorio bellissime che sono state veramente emozionanti per me, le ho ricollegate a, qualsi, a, a, a tanti momenti emotivi del film e, e mi hanno, hanno aumentato ancora di più il livello emotivo per me da spettatore. Perdonami, Lili. No, no. <ride> Dimmi. There were so many beautiful moments. It may seem try to say, but to me, this film was so deeply emotional on so many levels. Um, something that I do recall um, in a particular way that I can think of is that um, country town that was rebuilt. Now seeing the, that town again, uh, after I'd seen it when we were scouting with Pietro and the crew and it was deserted and abandoned and then seeing it again um, you know, coming to life with us and newly populated with everything we were doing it was so deeply emotional it was so beautiful to be there and to be part of that another scene that um, we've always talked about uh, that mm, involves myself and Pietro and it's truly something that belongs to the both of us was a situation in which um, we were shooting and then a storm was approaching and it was really a massive storm. And so we, you know, for safety reasons, we had to leave, we had to stop shooting. But the two of us looked at each other and with our uh, sound uh, guy, we stayed there and we decided let's, you know, give it these extra 10 minutes. And there we were shooting in the mud and we said, let's bring this home. And we did uh, bring it home, we did. And it was such a deeply moving moment in which the two of us felt very uh, connected. It was a highly emotional moment. And to finish off as a viewer, um, the part that really touched me at a deep level was seeing the editing, the wonderful, marvelous editing that was done on the film with the addition of the beautiful archival footage, which was so poignant and so um, well put together. It really struck the right emotional chords and I was able to reconnect it to specific feelings that uh, I had at certain times and certain scenes. And to me, it brought to the movie to a, a, a whole other uh, emotional level at a, at a, as high as it can be. That, um, it's very inter it's interesting you bring up the, um, the archival footage because another audience uh, member uh, had a question for Pietro about, um, about his use of archival footage. Um, you know, I, this is something you've done um, your work that your work is often uh, has often featured, but um, but maybe uh, but maybe maybe this is kind of a different case. Uh, this film is perhaps different, you know, different than the previous film. So so could you talk a bit about um, about your your thinking about the uh, the use of archival footage in this film? Diciamo che all'inizio il film doveva avere dei racconti di Martin Eden che noi avevamo nella sceneggiatura perché la sceneggiatura all'inizio era di 300 pagine. Poi pian piano, anche per questioni prettamente economiche, pian piano sono, saranno diventate 150, non mi ricordo. Comunque, buona parte di, del film, di tutto quello che immaginavamo di fare, non è stato possibile. Ma riguardo agli archivi, io ho sempre lavorato con gli archivi e per me era importante avere il Novecento nel film. Tutti gli avvenimenti del Novecento, perlomeno dal punto di vista italiano, europeo, di quello che avveniva in Europa a quei tempi, in Italia in particolar modo. E 
e per me i repertori sono al di sopra di qualsiasi finzione perché il cinema è storia e il repertorio è storia e il cinema non si può elevare più in alto della storia perché se diventa storia è già storia in sé e per questo per me è stato fondamentale avere gli archivi anche la possibilità di lavorare sul contrappunto al montaggio un po' come ho fatto negli altri film e sono contento di averlo utilizzato e spero di continuare a lavorare con gli archivi in futuro In the beginning, um, the film was going to be um, short stories connected to uh, Martin Eden's uh, story. And in the beginning, the script was going to be 300 pages long. And then little by little, mostly for financial reasons, we had to cut it down. I think at the end, it was about 150 pages as a script. And so a, 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 a large part of what we wanted to do, we weren't able to do. And that I have always worked with uh, archival footage in the past. I think it was very important for me to have uh, the 20th century in the film. And uh, it was important to me to show what truly happened at the time um, in Italy and, and in Europe, but especially in Italy. And to me, archival footage allow is, is, is history and cinema needs to be history and cinema can never elevate itself at a higher level than history and archival footage allows me to do that. Also in terms of editing, I worked with the counterpoint method, method which is what I'd done before and I, I'm happy I did and I want to continue doing that in the future. Um, this, is, uh, this is another related uh, sort of technical aesthetic question for Pietro, um, an audience member uh, noted that um, that you're working here as you have before in Super 16. Um, uh, this, but I, yeah, I actually like this question. The the audience member is asking about, uh, I guess, your um, about why you chose um, Super 16 over uh, 35 millimeter. Vabbè, abbiamo scelto Super 16 perché era più economico innanzitutto. Diciamo era anche per una questione di budget. Io volevo girare in 35, ma non, non ho avuto la possibilità di girare in 35. Se penso che gli altri film che ho fatto erano fatti con pellicola scaduta, per me era già qualcosa di, di importante avere la pellicola in 16 per girare. In un certo senso io amo il 16 perché è leggero. E visto che spesso giravo anche due sequenze al giorno, perché era, il film è stato girato anche un po' in maniera molto animata perché bisognava andare spesso anche veloci e, e con Luca lavoravamo tantissimo e spesso ero sempre in macchina perché facevamo prima. Il 16 un po' è stato importante perché il 35 probabilmente avevamo bisogno di più tempo per gestire il set ed è stato giusto così. Well, I um, used Super 16 mostly because it was cheaper, uh, first and foremost. Uh, you know, that's what my budget allowed. Uh, I wanted to have uh, 35 millimeters, but I couldn't afford it. If we think that in the past I'd uh, always worked with expired film, that's already uh, such a step um, ahead. Um, but you, I really liked having uh, Super 16 because uh, I, I love it because because it's light. Um, if we think that often we shot two sequences a day, um, shooting with Super 16 allowed us to do that because we shot the film in a very animal-like way, uh, very quickly. Um, I was always um, at, you know, at the camera and uh, that allowed me to be faster. We, you know, Luca uh, worked that way, uh, it allowed me to do that. And um, um, I think it was right to do it this way because had we had 35 millimeters film, it would have required more time. And I have a, a question for Luca about the, the physicality of the performance, um, sort of arriving at the, uh, the, this audience member wants to know, I, I guess about how you kind of arrived at this, like this physical idea of, of uh, Martin Eden, a literary character, of course, but, um, but this person's also asking about, I think it's interesting, um, 
it's a question of influence, but I, it's not about uh, literature or cinema. It's, it's about um, what role, if any, maybe visual art or music uh, plays for you or plays in your thinking about the kind of physical dimension of a performance. About Martin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or I guess in general. I don't know, not about person. influences that, that, that I, or, okay. In yeah, I think specific to Martin Eden, but, um, but if you have any good answers in general too, you know, that, that's fine. Okay, I can suggest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry, it's late. Yes. Um, um, ma il, il lavoro iniziale, uh, come abbiamo detto, come ho detto prima, era diviso in due parti e dico fortunatamente era diviso in due parti, quindi nella prima parte, come anche il libro e la sceneggiatura ci suggeriva, c'era da trovare un Martin Eden che fosse, Martin Eden, che fosse um, forte, sentire questa forza che lui aveva, um, questa forza sia nel, nelle azioni ma anche nel corpo. Um, e quindi molto banalmente io ho pensato e ho proposto a Pietro di voler cominciare un allenamento fisico, eh, quindi c'è stato puramente un allenamento, eh, un training fisico che mi ha aiutato a sentire questa forza che lui aveva all'inizio. Devo dire che, che mi è stato molto utile. Um, e poi dopo per entrare nella seconda parte, come ho già detto prima, c'è stata questa grande pausa e nella seconda parte eh, c'erano molte suggestioni, eh, doveva diventare una specie di, 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 di rock star nel suo momento discendente un po'. Eh, e allora abbiamo pensato a questi capelli in questo modo, ai denti rovinati, a un fisico che ormai personalmente per me aveva abbandonato quel, quel sentimento di forza che aveva, si era un po' lasciato andare. Ehm, vai Lili, intanto con questo, perdonami. Oh, va bene. Um, the initial work we did, as I mentioned, was uh, divided into two parts, luckily for me. Um, the first part, both for the book and for the script, um, Martin Eden needed to be strong. And I needed for people to perceive the strength that he had in, in his actions, but also in his body. So I um, decided that it was a good idea to um, undergo some uh, serious athletic training. And I suggested that to Pietro, he agreed. And this um, serious uh, training um, and working out allowed me to really perceive this strength. It was very useful for me. For the second part, um, we had this um, long break in between, and the second part needed to be a lot more evocative. And I was thinking of a um, faded rock star in the descending arc of, of a story. So we thought of the hair pulled back that way and of the uh, decaying teeth. And the body, uh, for me, was no longer what it used to be. It, you know, he had let himself go, by all means. E non so se il, poi c'erano i riferimenti. Per la prima parte mi ha aiutato moltissimo. Mi sono molto avvicinato alla figura proprio di Jack London. Per la prima parte, uh, in realtà, non ho mai pensato veramente a quali riferimenti. Questa domanda ha un po' risvegliato qualcosa alla quale forse non so rispondere, però sento di, di poter dire che nella prima parte mi sono molto ispirato proprio a, alla figura di Jack London. Ho ricercato molto materiale eh, anche fotografico su Jack London e, e, ho, e, ho, e ho letto molto in quel periodo il, i suoi scritti. E quindi questa, questa energia, questa, questa visione, questo suo essere mi ha molto colpito e mi ha molto guidato in una certa maniera nella prima parte del, del film nella seconda parte invece mi sono ispirato un po' a delle figure di, di intellettuali che, che anche mi, ha, mi hanno affascinato molto ehm, e hanno un po' questa maniera di usare questo cinismo e questa sì, questo cinismo un po' come, come, come barriera per, come come, come, come sì, un argine per, per mantenere da attaccare nascondendo dietro qualcosa di forse molto, molto più profondo e più grande. Um, sì. 
e, e figure come queste sono state per me ecco forse se posso dirlo mi sono concentrato un po' eh, su una figura come per esempio Carmelo Bene nei momenti in cui eh, parlava al pubblico ci sono dei momenti di, di, di un Carmelo Bene che, che mi hanno abbastanza colpito eh, di lui mentre parla con il pubblico eh, e poi altre figure diciamo For the first part, um, I, I was inspired by um, Brett London himself that helped me to a great extent. Um, actually, this question triggered something in me. In terms of the, my references, um, I really don't know if I can answer um, specifically. Let's go back to the Jet London figure. I did a lot of research on him. I looked at uh, photographic material. I read a lot of his writings. and. Uh, what comes off is great energy and his vision and his way of being. That's something that um, I really looked at and it deeply touched me and I was really impressed by him and looked up to him for the first part. Um, for the second part, I was thinking more of figures of intellectuals that have always fascinated me and people who tend to use their cynicism as a barrier, as a dam, and they tend to attack others in order to hide something more uh, fragile, something deeper and, and, and greater. Um, so there's several um, personalities I can think of. In particular, I'm thinking of Carmelo Bene uh, in some um, images of thing where he um, speaks to an audience. You know, these ideas of him speaking in front of an audience had really impressed me, him and others. Se posso dire un'ultima stupidaggine, forgive me, Dan, eh, ci sono anche dei, dei, delle registrazioni, eh, per esempio di, di, di Marlon Brando, che, che ci sono in un documentario meraviglioso fatto su di lui. Eh, queste registrazioni, c'è un momento dove, dove penso cominci proprio il film in questa maniera, dove eh, Martin Eden fa una, una registrazione per se stesso, per, per qualcun altro, non lo sappiamo, però sta registrando e, 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 e quelle registrazioni di, di Marlon Brando che sono riuscito a recuperare grazie a questo documentario mi hanno, mi hanno dato una, ecco, questa quest altra direzione di cui parlavamo. I just want to add some, uh, one little thing. There's um, some recordings by Marlon Brando uh, that appear in a marvelous documentary on him. I think, you know, in the beginning when the, the film starts, I think it starts like that. And Martin Eden um, works on a recording uh, for himself or for others. And those recordings by Marlon Brando that I saw uh, really inspired me for that. Um, so we're, we're uh... Sadly, we're just about out of time, but I guess you guys probably also should go to sleep at, um, at some point. But uh, before we go, um, uh, uh, I just want to ask one more question, which we've gotten many times um, in the chat. So uh, I'll just ask it. Um, uh, it's a very practical question. Uh, have you guys watched any good films since you've been stuck, you know, like all of us? <laughs> a bad. A lot of movies, yeah. A yeah. Good movies. Yeah. I I think they want to they want some of your recommendations. <laughs> It's my sense. Vogliono dei consigli da voi. Yeah, yeah. I I I would recommend because I I I I watched it like uh, last week. Uh, uh, Andrea Arnold. I was very moved from from her uh, movies. Um, dei film meravigliosi di Andrea Arnold uh, che mi hanno molto colpito. Uh, yeah. That's the wonderful film, mine now. Arnold, uh, which really uh, touched me. E i film di Pietro Marcello, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And all of Pietro Marcello's movies. Yeah, it's, it's a bit complicated. I watch it every day. It's a bit complicated because to have a, to choose a film, you know, I'm the base. I'm I was cinephile, but today yeah. maybe not anymore, like on the past because. But there are a lot of films, so many, you know. It's complicated for me to choose one. I should start to choose all films of my friends. But <laughs> not for now. Yeah, for, easy, for Luca, it's more simple to do this. Yeah. Um, well, then, uh, 
the, well then yeah then people should just, let's go uh, to see Noturno by Gianfranco Rosi yeah now we're talking <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, great. So I think, uh, oh, also, uh, just real quick, someone, this wasn't a question, but someone wanted to note that uh, Lilia has done a very good job interpreting. So, so <laughs> yeah, that was a nice thing. Anyway, um, I want to thank all of you uh, very much for being here, for staying up late with us. Um, uh, if you haven't uh, watched Martin Eden yet, uh, please, uh, please do so. You won't regret it. And, uh, and watch all of uh, Pietra's films that we have up sure. in the virtual cinema that will also be very, uh, very, you'll have fun with that. So, um, well, thank you both. Um, thank you very and, much. And hope to see you guys in person, you know. Sometimes Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lilia. Grazie, grazie a voi. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.